Previously on The Walking Dead. <laughs> Did I remind you of anybody you know? I wanna die. <laughs> Living on the street is hard and also it hurts my f Oh no! Do I choose the four day old expired milk? Or waste that milk and use the new milk? Oh, hey, Zach. How's it going, man? I don't feel so good. What's wrong? Look, dude, you don't understand. You okay? I drink the expired milk. Ooh. I, I just gotta go to the bathroom. Okay. Nah, no, you gotta move. Dude, o okay, dude, gotta move. okay, okay, okay. Go bathroom. shit in the shower or on the toilet hey Vsauce Zach here choice what is it exactly definition an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities in life we make dozens of choices each and every day from the minuscule of what should I eat for breakfast to the macro of what should I marry oh did you think I was gonna say who should I marry no, I mean, what should I marry? I'm still trying to figure out that one right there. Either way, in some religions, people even believe that choice is just a figment of our imagination, and in fact, we have no choice. Everybody's path is completely predetermined, and no matter what quote-unquote choice we make, the destination remains the same. Today, we're going to be taking a microscope at the choices in Season 1 of Telltale's The Walking Dead and seeing just how much choice really plays out in its story. We know that decisions are made multiple times in a given playthrough, and we know that our choices are supposed to matter, but at the end of the day, do they really matter? Let's find out. This video will have extensive spoilers to The Walking Dead Season 1. You have been warned. Also, make sure you watch to the end so you can find out how you can win a copy of the final season of The Walking Dead on Steam. We start the game as Lee, a fugitive posted up in a cop car on his way to jail when a zombie apocalypse strikes. As the game progresses, we'll have plenty of dialogue trees to go through, many of which I will consider micro choices. Many of these have no real impact on the story, so I will not be going through all of them. They do, however, showcase many characters' personalities, flaws, and developments. A lone zombie causes the cop to crash his vehicle. Lee wakes up handcuffed with an injured leg when he notices that zombies have run amok. He makes it to a vacant neighborhood where he meets Clementine, a small child who is on her own. Her parents are nowhere to be found, so Lee promises to look after her. This is where our first major choice is made. What should we do now? We can either leave during the day or wait till night. The big question today is do our choices matter? But first, we have to quantify that question. Choices matter at every scale on a different level. If I decide to eat a double quarter pounder with cheese from McDonald's today for lunch, it affects my health a little bit. But if I eat the same thing every day, that decision becomes more important. I mean, look at me, I'm fat. Don't you understand? It would also be better for the environment, though, if I ate the double quarter pounder because the box can be recyclable compared to eating, let's say, a McDouble, which comes in a wrapper, which will go in the trash can and fill the landfills. Even more so though if I made the correct decision and I decided to make my own food instead, I could buy produce from a local produce stand, help a small business owner by purchasing their goods, make a salad which is healthier for me, and I can wash the dishes, therefore instead of throwing away things I'm helping the environment. So choices are extremely complex in nature, which is why I'm going to be selfish for this video. I think. When Telltale says that your choices matter, they matter primarily to you, the player, and by extension, Lee, the main character, and any of the other characters that are in your party. This does not include characters you just met for the first time that have no chance in joining you. This does not include characters that you have no chance in meeting if you make a different decision. When you ask, do our choices matter, 
I'm asking, do they matter to Lee, the other main characters that we meet along the way, and the overall story as a whole? So we make our first choice. We need to get out of this neighborhood. It's not safe. We're less likely to be seen if we move at night. If you go out during the night, you meet two cops, Andre and Sean. They talk about a buddy of theirs that has been turned into a zombie. We go to Sean's farm and meet his father, Herschel. Herschel lets them stay the night. This is technically the wrong decision. Instead, we should go during the day. We need to find help before it gets dark. Yeah, it's not safe at night. During the day, we meet Sean and Chet. Chet is the zombie from earlier that Sean and Andre are talking about. By going during the day, we've saved a man's life. But does this choice matter? No, it has very little impact to the story, if at all. Sure, you can save a man's life by going during the day, but because you never have any other interaction with Chet, it's honestly a mute point. In fact, I think the only reason to save Chet is so you don't have to hear a couple of minutes of dialogue talking about how great of a guy he was and how people are sad that he's dead, because if this is your first time playing, you have no connection to this character whatsoever. Sure, empathy is a thing, and in the real world, you're not going to tell someone to shut up about a lost loved one, but in this game, nobody really cares about Chet. Even more so, because we're so early in the story, even if this is your second playthrough, you're going to forget completely about Chet. He's meaningless to the story. Nobody knows this character. So it's not like you're going to be able to make a conscious decision to either save him or kill him. In fact, I'm probably bringing more awareness to Chet than anybody in any video has ever done on the internet. This choice doesn't matter. The next morning, Lee and Clementine are awakened by Kenny and his son, Duck. Lee is from Macon, and Kenny and his family are headed that way, so Lee agrees to tag along with them. On the Herschel farm, there's a broken fence, which Sean and Duck have decided to fix up. This is where things go batshit. Go! I'll get my gun! A few rogue zombies come through the broken fence and grab both Sean and Duck. You have seconds to make a quick decision. Do you save Duck, the child? Do you save Sean, Herschel's son? Or do you just hate both characters and decide to do nothing? If you decide to save Sean, things go horrible and he dies. Then Herschel becomes the key Stanfield from Get Out. Get out. Sorry, man. Okay. Get out! Get the fuck no. out of here! No. Alternatively, you can save Duck or do nothing, and the exact same thing happens. Only this time, you get to see a man beg for his life while you stand there, like the insensitive fuck you are, waiting to go to hell for your wrong decision. After all is said and done, your decision impacts your relationship with Kenny, a character that we will be with for a very long time. If you save Duck, Kenny's son, then Kenny appreciates you a little bit more. If you save Sean or do nothing, then you have a negative strike towards Kenny. We'll get to this in a bit. But does this choice matter? It really doesn't, and that's for a number of reasons. For starters, no matter what you do, Sean will still die, Herschel will kick you off the farm, and Kenny will still offer to give you a ride. If there was a variation between these three things, then this choice would matter, but there's not. Number two, our choice doesn't matter because of Kenny's actions. No matter what we do, Sean dies and Duck lives. That's because Lee isn't able to move the tractor fast enough to save Sean, so he calls for Kenny's help, but for some reason, Kenny refuses. Also, no matter what we do, Kenny will rush in and save Duck, meaning that Duck doesn't need our help to save him. This choice does not matter. Later in the day, the crew run out of gas when they run into more zombies and more people. This group of people are quite hostile, and it appears that Duck may have been bitten by a zombie. At this point, you're forced to make another choice. You can either side with Kenny and save Duck from being thrown out, which will add to your loyalty with Kenny, or you can side with Larry, a new asshole that you just met, who wants Duck to be killed. Regardless of your decision, Duck has not been bitten, and we are clearly able to see that. It's just that these adults don't have the patience or the common sense to wait an extra five minutes to clean up the boy and make sure that he wasn't actually bitten. But does this choice matter? The problem with this choice is that it really comes down to maintaining a relationship with Kenny. 
this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Telltale has set up a relationship meter of sorts when it comes to your relationship with Kenny. It's not nearly as detailed as something like the Persona series or a dating sim. Think of it as a loyalty bar. If you are loyal to Kenny and his family, he will be loyal to you. At first, this is seen as a fault in Telltale's writing, and it very well could be, but for the sake of our topic, let's just assume that this is a fault in Kenny's character. See, Kenny is binary. I'm going to skip around a little bit in the game to show you exactly what I mean. In episode 3, Long Road Ahead, the episode starts with a zombie attacking Lee. If before this point you have maintained a positive relationship status with Kenny, he will save you. However, if you have a negative relationship status with Kenny, you just save yourself. If this is your first time playing, you're not going to know that having that relationship status with Kenny is what could have saved you. But at the end of the day, it didn't actually matter anyways, because the outcome is still the exact same. You've saved yourself. whoop de doo It also comes down to the things that Kenny holds against you. You can do 10 things right in Kenny's eyes, but do two things wrong and he continues to hold a grudge towards you, giving you a negative relationship status. He's like a bad high school friend that you still keep in contact with today, but for some reason he still can't go over the fact that you didn't help him on that test in algebra. And if we look at the overall end of the game, at the end of episode 4, it's revealed that Lee has been bitten. If your relationship with Kenny has been good, then when you ask for help, he'll go with you. However, regardless of whether he goes with you or not, regardless of how or why he helps you, that bite is still the downfall of Lee. Lee dies regardless. There's nothing you can do to save him. Now obviously we got a little off track here, but let's be honest. This is the perfect route to take when asking if these choices actually matter. Honestly, I could go through every single choice in season 1 and analyze it, and that's what I plan to do, but choice after choice, I kept coming to the same conclusions. As Lee, as the main character, as the player, there's nothing you can do to save yourself. As nihilistic as this viewpoint is, your choices don't matter at the end of the game because you're still going to die. There's not an option that stops you from being bitten by a zombie. There's not an option that stops the infection. There's false security set in place in episode 5 that makes you have a sense of false hope. Surely he's the main character, he won't die, right? And while yes, I think in terms of storytelling this is excellent, it kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time, I have issues with saying that the choices matter when in retrospect, they really don't. At the end of episode 1, you have another pretty big choice to make that I will agree actually impacts a chunk of the game. Well, kind of. There are these two characters named Carly and Doug, and you're forced to save one of them. Telltale really likes putting you between a rock and a hard place. The main problem here is, you just met these characters, so your emotional attachment to them is none. Either way, by saving Carly, for episodes 2 and 3, you end up with Carly in your party. She is useful at times, and Lee even begins to start being romantic with her. But at the end of episode 3, Carly and Lily, another character that we meet in episode 1, get into an argument, and Lily shoots her in cold blood. Even though we had saved her the one time, we have no option to save her this time. This does make for interesting storytelling, but my problem lies in the other option at the end of episode 1. What if we had saved Doug instead? The only difference with Doug in our party instead of Carly is that Lee has nobody to fall in love with. Everything that Carly would have done, Doug ends up doing. Not only that, but Lily still ends up shooting Doug and killing him instead of Carly, albeit a bit of an accident this time. This choice doesn't matter. And the lack of significant choices continue. After Lily has killed either of these characters, we get the choice to leave her behind. If you leave her behind, a zombie chases her, but we have no idea if she's alive or dead. If you keep her around, she just steals Kenny's RV, and again, we have no idea if she's alive or dead. Either way, the result is the exact same. I feel a little bit like a broken record because honestly, this choice doesn't matter either. I think the only choice that was interesting to me had to do with a character named Ben, but I'm all out of time for today, so I'm going to have to leave that for a different video. 
At the end of the day, Telltale Games have done something that many companies have not been able to do. They've taken the traditional adventure point-and-click genre and modernized it with popular franchises by incorporating interesting art styles, fantastic storytelling, and compelling character development. But the act of choice as one of their main mechanics is simply for show and not something that I believe actually impacts the overall stories in a significant way. The option of choice in your game is a very marketable option, sure, but when these choices don't actually matter, why put so much emphasis on them in the first place? Thank you so much for watching this Zack Snyder original. I'll be back again next Friday for another video somewhere in nerd culture. The Walking Dead, the final season is coming out in just a few days and I'm doing a giveaway. I'm giving it away on Steam. There's a link in the description box below. Go ahead and hit that link before time runs out. The giveaway ends on August 14th, the day that the game comes out. You can earn multiple entries. Check it out before it's too late. Last but not least, if you're not subscribed here yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can get the notification for the next video that comes out next week. And in the meantime, thank you so much again for watching. And I hope you guys have a great day. Goodbye. Do I shit in the shower or on the toilet? No!